Phil, this is simple. Get it to the end of the course as fast as you possibly can, but as you mentioned, it is uphill. Yeah, you know, it's always tough to get one of these big trucks rolling, but even once you get it rolling, usually you don't have to deal with an incline. Well, he goes 6'2", 309 pounds, the 29-year-old from Ukraine. But again, he is fighting physics here. That's 26,400 pounds he's towing. I like his technique. You can hear him keeping the breath moving. His feet keep digging. His hips are low. But that truck just does not want to go uphill. 75 seconds is the limit. He's got to cover this 20-meter course. You can see he's starting to hit the wall, too. He's doing a good job, though. Eking out every last inch you can possibly get as the clock winds down. His Ten hips seconds. are low. He's keeping a lot of tension on the rope and the harness. But the truck's nearly come to a stop. Tough pull. And he will run out of time, so Sergey Romanchuk will be credited with distance. His mark, 14.50 meters, as we are off and running in Rockingham. Chalet. Next up in the fire engine pole, the group leader. This is Lawrence Chalet, Phil. The Englishman has looked so consistent so far. Ready. Consistent, and he keeps improving year after year. I'm always impressed by this guy. He does not look like an athlete. He's not especially remarkable at any one thing. I hate to keep using this word, but consistency. He's just so solid in everything. He's always surprised me in how great he really is. Right now, he is strapped to 26,400 pounds in the form of that fire engine. He's got to get it across this course that is 20 meters long in less than 75 seconds. You know, he looks picture perfect, but I'm not sure about his footwear. Maybe not the best choice for the fire truck pull. Most guys you will see wearing a very specialized shoe, a high friction rubber shoe, a rock climbing shoe. Those look like construction boots or work boots or something like that. Starting to run out of time here. Remember, it's just 75 seconds. Chalet, can he get it to the finish line? You see him plant both feet. This is almost like the beginning of the truck pull. When the athlete starts out, they plant both feet, try to get the hips to fall, lunge forward. And he will run out of time, so Chalet will be credited with distance. And his total distance, 16.50 meters. So that now becomes the mark to beat in the fire engine pole. With the planet's best strength athletes crumbling under its weight, this fire engine hasn't exactly come to anyone's rescue. Norwegian Espen Aune and Serbia's Irvin Katona will try to change that when we return to the Metric's World's Strongest Man. We got him hooked up to the heart rate monitor, and I expect, Phil, his heart rate should go extremely high in this event. Yeah, if any events are going to max heart rate, it's probably the truck pull. Well, his pre-event testing had him at 188 beats per minute. That was his max, and he's going to probably get really close to that, Phil, wouldn't you think? Absolutely, especially as he starts to hit the incline. You know, he's really not uh, working much harder right now than when he started. So a nice pace for Espen Aune of Norway. He's six feet tall, 298 pounds, and just 29 years of age. And now the rookie from Norway really starting to feel that 26,400 pounds as he hits the incline. Yeah, you can see his heart rate starting to climb here. You can definitely see it in his face. And Espen Aune is absolutely done and out. He will be credited with distance, and he goes into the lead. 18.35 meters from the young man from Norway. Well, he really hit the wall all at once. I thought he was good to hang in there a little bit more and maybe get close to the finish line there. He seemed to really just collapse, stumble, came on all at once. Ready? He has been a finalist, but right now all he can think about is the 26,400 pounds that he's strapped to. 
and he's got to try to get through this course as quick as possible. Remember, the mark to beat put up by Espinout of Norway, 18.35 meters. Katona can really flip the switch. He can go from a terrible event and just completely put it out of his mind, completely turn on, come in very hungry each and every time the whistle blows. He's really capable, he's really intense, he's got a lot of heart. One of my favorite competitors. At 34 years of age, he's 6'2", 324 pounds. Espen out of Norway looking on. Remember, the mark to beat, 18.35 meters as he hits the incline. You can see how low he really got his hips, and he's pumping those feet, getting every inch out of each and every footstep. Planting both feet now, lunging the hips forward, just like starting to pull all over again. And he has surpassed the mark put up by Espen Ana, but can he finish the course? Man, he is going to work hard with everything he's got until the whistle blows. And there it is. So he will be credited with a distance of 19.40 meters. He is your winner. And that performance was a great display, an example to all strongmen of will, determination, and really technique. Well, well. <laughs> Alna knows it too. Irvin Katona will earn six points for his third win in four events. His distance of 19.40 meters topped the group. Alna just over a meter behind to pick up second. Then it was Chalet in third, Romanchuk in fourth, and Perjol in fifth. With two events to go, group two continues to be wide open. Chalet leads the overall, Katona sits in second, and then it's Espen Alna of Norway. Remember, only two men will qualify for the final. Four men in this group have a chance to advance to that final. Which two will move on? Which two will be sent home? We'll have the answers when we return to the Metrics World's Strongest Man. Ready? Lift! Now he's got good genes. He is the three-time Romania's strongest man. His father, a runner-up in that competition, and Paul Perjol is successful at 220. He looked textbook in that first lift. See how he launches it off the shoulder. He takes time getting it right to that sweet spot. It's not just the deltoid and triceps that press this thing. It's the whole body. So the body actually pushes the weight from the shoulder. It launches it from that point of contact along the back. And that's 245 pounds, unable to get the lockout. So the youngest competitor in this group says enough is enough, but he's credited with two lifts. You can see it in his eyes. This guy is pushing himself to the limit throughout these qualifying events. This is a nice start for his first time ever at Worlds. So Lawrence Chalet has motivation right here. He is the leader after four events, but right now it is Paul Perjol's two lifts on the first two dumbbells of 220 and 230 that he's got a target. Perjol, the only athlete to register any presses. Chalet really has an opportunity here to take some nice, easy points. So he has matched the mark put up by Paul Perzol, but can he get this third one up, Phil? This is 245 pounds in hand. Well, he had great explosiveness with the first two weights. No. Now he still has plenty of time, remember. Two put up by Perjol, two put up by Chalet. If he can get this one up, he will win this event. Well, it looked like he just fell out of his groove there. You've got to keep in mind the center of gravity of the dumbbell, center of gravity of the athlete, and try to get the two matched up. If the weight gets too far out to the side, it's just impossible. And he gets it. Really impressive there. His ability to control that weight mid-lockout, mid-flight from the shoulder to lockout position was really, really impressive. I didn't think he was going to lock that one out. And he's not even going to try for number four at 255 pounds, and why bother? Yes. Lord Chalet is your winner in the giant dumbbell press. Good performance, good points for Chalet. Lawrence Chalet lifted three of the four dumbbells to earn the victory. Paul Perjol was the only other athlete to manage even a single lift, and he took second. So by virtue of his win and the struggles of others, Chalet claims one of the two spots for this group in the World's Strongest Man final. Right now it's Irvin Katona who owns the other transfer position, but Espen Allen and Sergei Romanchuk each will have a chance to take that away at the final event. 
With three event wins, Irvin Katona should have sailed right into the final, but a pair of stumbles by the Serbian has opened the door for Espen out of Norway. Their showdown when the Metric's World's Strongest Man returns to Wingate University.